Hello physical scientists, this is Dr. B and we're talking about Newton's law of gravity. Here is Newton's law of gravity. The gravity between two objects is measured as a force. Gravity is a force. This is the gravitational constant. It's a tiny number and that is multiplied times the mass of the first object and the mass of the second object and it's divided by the distance. So if the distance is twice as far, the gravity is divided by four. If the distance is four times as far, gravity is divided by 16. So this distance here is a big deal. The masses are also a big deal because they're taken together. If we have the mass of something large and the mass of something small, the force this large object exerts on the small object is the same as the force the small object exerts on the large object. So the force is the same between the two objects. That's important. And remember, it's divided by their distance. So when they're closer together, the gravitational force is stronger. When they're further apart, the gravitational force is weaker. Imagine we're on a spaceship taking off from planet Earth. On planet Earth, gravity, we're close to planet Earth, gravity's pretty strong, but once we get far out away from planet Earth, the gravity gets a lot weaker and we astronauts experience microgravity, or only a little bit of gravity because they're so far away from the Earth. Um, this lab is going to help you explore this equation in a way without too much math and the uh, the FET lab is right here, and I'll show you the FET lab on the screen in just a minute. So our first question is kind of a warm up. You want to underline or highlight the statements you think are true, and you can explore these statements over when you get to the gravity force lab, and I'll show you that right now. So in the simulation, we can see that we can change a couple of different things. We can change the distance, and the sound here is for students with um, visual disabilities, so they can kind of hear the distance. We can see that the distance here is reported by the size of this vector and also the number here. Sometimes it's easier to write the number if we use scientific notation. You can see this is a number and it has a 10 to the negative something. This means the decimal point moves seven places this way to the left. And the bigger this exponent, this negative exponent gets, the smaller the number is. So let's look at what happens to the force of gravity as we move those objects apart. It's 10 to the negative eight, which is a smaller number. You can look at it in decimal notation if, um, Scientific notation is confusing. Watch how the number changes and how the arrow changes here if we move them closer together or further apart. It gets really tiny if they're very far apart. We can also change the masses of the objects. And you can see how that influences both forces at the same time. So remember, there's two things we can change as independent variables. We could change the mass while holding distance constant, or we could change the distance while holding the mass, keeping the mass the same, holding it constant. And what we're looking for here as a dependent variable is the force, and that's displayed here. You can do it in decimal notation, or you can do it in scientific notation, where this number here, the larger this negative number here is, the smaller the number is. So you should have some ideas about how to answer question one. So now that you have some ideas about question one, because we've worked with the simulation a bit, we can think about some of the variables that we're going to use in this experiment. A variable is anything we can change. And the independent variable is something that we think of ahead of time that we are going to change on purpose. So the, um, like I said, when we were looking at the simulation, we could change the distance or we could change the mass of the object. 
And we're assuming in this lab that a large object and a small object have different masses. Although they could have the same mass if they had different densities, but we're assuming that everything has a different, the same density in the simulation. The t dependent variable is what changes depending on what you decide in, uh, to be the independent variable. So the dependent variable here would be gravity. The independent variable are distance or size. If you need help on independent or dependent variables, you can check out these two YouTube videos on your lab sheet. So before you do this, make sure you get familiar with the simulation and then underline the different variables that you can find in the simulation. Explain what you think the size of the arrows on top of each sphere represent. Remember, the universal law of gravity is the force. So this simulation is calculating, is doing this calculation for you, and that arrow on top is the force, the force of gravity. It's multiplying the two masses, it's dividing by a square of the distance between the masses, and then it's multiplying that whole um, calculation by the gravitational constant, which is a tiny number because we know the gravity we exert on objects is rather small compared to the gravity we feel from planet Earth um, uh, exerting a force on us. So pick a variable to manipulate. Remember, you can either manipulate distance or you can manipulate the size of the two objects. And then the dependent variable is going to be the force. You're going to read that at the top of the simulation in those arrows at the very top. So number four, you're going to change a different independent variable. For example, if you change the distance um, in question three, you want to change the mass in question four and then look at what happens to the force of gravity as a result of changing the mass. Remember to keep distance the same as your, if you're having mass as your independent variable. Keep distance the same and then just change the mass and see what happens. Remember in science we only want to change one thing at a time. So number six here is highlight or underline the correct answer and provide your reasoning. So I'm gonna do the first one for you. Gravity is a force that can be changed. That's true, we saw that in the simulation. We saw those arrows at the top of the simulation could be changed depending on how far the masses were or how, how closer they were together and also the size of the mass. So I'd like you to write a CER, a claim, evidence and reasoning. Our claim here is gravity can be changed. Um, evidence, gravity is changed as I change the distance or mass in the simulation. So evidence is what I say to support my claim. Like you might make a claim, say the best video game is uh, whatever you play and then you you would have some evidence like it has the most players or um, there's the most active player community or you could have evidence um, there's a constant the game is constantly evolving they're coming up with new problems so you would um, if a, you made a claim to a friend you might back it up with some evidence and then reasoning we know that universal new Newton's universal law of gravity uses the masses and the distance between the objects. So that's our reasoning that shows why the evidence supports the claim. Um, our evidence is that we know we can change distance or mass and change the force of gravity. And then we know that because we have Newton's universal law of gravitation up here, we know that the force changes based on the mass and the distance. So I use that as my reasoning to support my evidence to back my claim.
For the next one, I set you up. The more massive an object is, the smaller the force of gravity. Is that true or false? So your claim would be explaining why it's true or that it's true or false. The evidence, support your reasoning that it's true or false with evidence you noticed in the sim. And then the reasoning is how does Newton's law of gravitation figure in the evidence that you saw in the simulation? So remember to use claim evidence reasoning for six, seven, eight, and nine. Um, I'll give you a hint on number nine. The sun is much more massive than Jupiter. You can look up the exact masses if you would like.